In April 2024, flying over the frozen expanse of Greenland, the Gulfstream 3 NASA research aircraft had been conducting routine surveys of Arctic ice sheets when the radar instruments captured an image that defied explanation. Cryospheric scientist Chad Green recalls the moment when they spotted the impossible. Quote, we didn't know what it was at first. Deep under the ice, stretching for miles, was the unmistakable geometry of human engineering. Large structures, perfectly preserved. As the crew rushed to contact the base, the true nature of their discovery began to unravel. What they had found was Camp Century, a highly classified Cold War facility built with a single, terrifying purpose to be the last resort during a nuclear Armageddon. In 1960, Danish Prime Minister H.C. Hansen found himself staring into a diplomatic nightmare. He had just been informed U.S. military forces were constructing a massive underground base in northeastern Greenland, a Danish territory, and they hadn't bothered to ask permission. The Americans only revealed the project's existence after Danish officials began investigating disturbing reports from the region. When Hansen demanded answers, a harrowing and unsettling scheme emerged. Project Iceworm, a classified operation with such staggering scope and terrifying implications that it would haunt him for years to come. For Pentagon strategists in the 1960s, the worst case scenario wasn't simply the start of a nuclear war, it was losing the crucial advantage of the first strike. Nuclear warfare strategy held that whoever struck first might be the only one left standing. A preemptive attack could obliterate an enemy's missile silos, command centers, and delivery systems in one devastating sweep, leaving them paralyzed and unable to retaliate. The Soviets knew this too, and the Americans needed insurance against a surprise Soviet first strike that could cripple their mainland defenses. Project Iceworm was that insurance policy, a plan of unthinkable ambition. Deep beneath Greenland's ice sheet, the U.S. military would construct a vast network of tunnels and bunkers, all buried a hundred feet below the surface. This frozen labyrinth would house hundreds of nuclear missile launch sites connected by thousands of ice tunnels to command centers and military installations. The scale was mind-boggling. 52,000 square miles of underground infrastructure, three times the size of Denmark itself. Launch complexes would be buried 28 feet down, with missile silos probing even deeper into the ice. These launch sites would be arranged in clusters spaced four miles apart, with new tunnels dug annually. Within five years, they planned to have thousands of potential firing positions, allowing them to constantly rotate hundreds of Iceman missiles, modified versions of the Air Force's Minutemen. This city under the ice would operate independently of Washington, powered by the PM-2A, the world's first mobile nuclear reactor. If the Soviets ever launched a surprise attack that devastated the U.S. mainland, they would be in for a massive surprise, a barrage of nuclear warheads erupting from Greenland's ice cap. Now, Hansen faced an impossible choice, quietly acquiesce to this secret American doomsday facility in Danish territory, or risk the diplomatic fallout exposing it to the world. Either way, he felt the weight of nuclear war on his shoulders. What Hansen learned next was even more unsettling. The Americans weren't just planning this facility. They had already begun to carve it into Greenland's ice. Using cut-and-cover trenching, they were building an underground city beneath the frozen wasteland. The technique was deceptively simple. Dig a trench, build within it, then let the ice reclaim it. Perfect for hiding something you never want to be found. The scale of construction was staggering. Massive steel arches spanned trenches stretching 1,100 feet long, creating 26-foot-wide and high caverns with enough space to house entire buildings. They were constructing a subterranean metropolis, complete with modern bathrooms, dining halls, and medical facilities. Prefabricated buildings rose within these frozen corridors, while vehicles rumbled through the tunnels, shuttling supplies to vast storage areas filled with fuel and food. At its heart, the mobile nuclear reactor hummed steadily, proving it could power this underground world at a moment's notice. Hansen and Danish military officials were furious at the Americans' audacity, constructing this buried city in their territory without so much as a diplomatic courtesy. Yet revealing the project would only serve Moscow's interests, potentially leaving Denmark vulnerable if the Cold War ever turned hot. 
Swallowing his pride, Hansen gave the Americans their blessing, and Project Iceworm burrowed deeper into the ice. Already, hundreds of personnel lived and worked in this frozen underworld as the complex expanded relentlessly. They drew water directly from the glacier through an ingenious system of rod wells. Perforated pipes buried horizontally in the ice connected to suction pumps. Every drop was meticulously tested for contaminants, even the plague. The facility, now dubbed Camp Century, grew more sophisticated by the day, its fleet of vehicles patrolling an ever-expanding network of tunnels. To the Pentagon, it seemed like the perfect plan was falling into place, a massive nuclear arsenal hidden beneath the Arctic ice, ready to strike even after a Soviet first strike had devastated the mainland. The Danish cooperation secured, nothing seemed capable of stopping this ambitious project. But the ice had other plans. The first signs of trouble at Camp Century emerged when the people living inside the ice tunnels began to experience a rather fetid problem. The sewage disposal system proved catastrophically flawed. The sewage sump was positioned 150 feet from the nearest building and initially constructed without ventilation. By the end of the first year of operation, the odor had become nearly unbearable in the nearest quarters. While subsequent venting at the sump reduced the stench, it failed to address the underlying problem. Core samples taken in 1962 revealed that liquid waste had permeated up to 170 feet horizontally through the ice, accelerating trench deformation and allowing the sewage odor to infiltrate nearby sleeping quarters. The situation became so dire that some areas had to be abandoned due to sanitation concerns. Then there was the problem of snow accumulation on the tunnel walls, which proved far more problematic than planners had projected. Teams worked tirelessly with specialized equipment to trim back the perpetually growing snow layers, which threatened to completely bury operational areas. Soon, engineers noticed the ice tunnels housing the nuclear reactor were compressing at an alarming rate, nearly two feet per year rather than the projected four inches. This rapid compression threatened to crush vital equipment and created dangerous structural instability throughout the facility. The glacial ice moved at approximately 100 feet per year, far faster than initial surveys suggested. Engineers fought a losing battle, trying to stabilize structures against these powerful glacial forces. Although ice caps may appear solid and stable, they are constantly in motion, spreading outward from their center. Over time, this movement causes tunnels and trenches to become narrower as their walls shift, deform, and bulge, ultimately resulting in ceiling collapses. By mid-1962, the ceiling of the reactor room at Camp Century had sunk and required raising by five feet. Project Iceworm planners had severely underestimated the shifting ice sheets, and it was now generating a plethora of critical issues. The nail in the coffin came when new studies revealed the ice sheets movement would likely carry the entire facility, including its nuclear waste and frozen sewage, toward the coast. The impossibility of maintaining operations under such hostile conditions forced the military to abandon both Camp Century and the broader Project Iceworm initiative. The camp was abruptly shut down in 1966. But the mystery was to prevail. The public was never to know about the existence of Camp Century. Camp Century's true purpose as a missile base first surfaced in January 1995 when an inquiry by the Danish Foreign Policy Institute investigating the history of nuclear weapons in Greenland brought initial details to light. However, while documents revealed the base's intended purpose, actual images of the facilities remained elusive for decades. A breakthrough occurred in April 2024, when cryospheric scientist Chad Green, conducting ice sheet surveys aboard a NASA Gulfstream 3 aircraft, made an unexpected discovery. Vast human-made structures deep within the ice Previous airborne surveys over Camp Century had detected only minimal traces of the base, using conventional ground-penetrating radar that produced simple 2D profiles of the ice sheet. Camp Century's structures appeared as mere distortions in the ice layers in these earlier scans. The April 2024 flights utilized NASA's uninhabited aerial vehicle synthetic aperture radar mounted to the aircraft's belly. Unlike conventional radar, this system's sideward-looking capability and advanced processing 
created detailed 3D maps of the subsurface structures. As Green described it, quote, we were looking for the bed of the ice, and out pops Camp Century. We didn't know what it was at first. In the new data, individual structures in the secret city are visible in a way that they've never been seen before. The resulting images provided the first detailed glimpse of this classified Cold War facility, revealing the scale of a base designed for apocalyptic purposes. According to the original plans, Camp Century was intended to support a missile network capable of destroying 80% of targets in the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe. A doomsday facility, now forever entombed beneath Greenland's ice sheet. <laughs>